Uh, good morning. Um, thank you. I love when we get a little bit of a call back there. Um, that makes it a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to talk about a few things today. And um, you know, it, it sounds like everybody in the room is a marketing or communications um, professional and can relate to how broadly this could go. Um, if you guys had given me an hour and a half, I could probably fill it all. Um, especially on this topic, me. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, um, I am not from Minnesota. Uh, I am a native of Manchester by the Sea, Massachusetts, made recently very famous um, by um, our friend Casey Affleck. Um, I've been in Minnesota for about four years now, and I'll go through sort of my, my professional background and how I landed here. But um, I'm a graduate of the University of Massachusetts, UMass. Um, Eisenberg School of Management. I'm seeing applause, which I love. Yeah. Minutemen, yes, we love that. Um, and about a year and a half ago, was moved into the VP of Marketing role here for the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Minnesota Lynx. Um, we do have a WNBA franchise here that just recently won its fourth um, WNBA championship, which is super exciting. Um, and the areas I oversee for both of the franchises are listed up there. Um, advertising, we do work with an outside agency, both um, from sort of a, a strategic standpoint, then from a media planning standpoint. Um, branding, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, events, grassroots, um, private events, whatever that might be. Um, merchandising, hopefully you'll all get a chance to stop at the team store later this evening and take a look at um, our new assortment of gear. Uh, game presentation, which is everything you'll experience from the moment you walk through the gates. Digital media, which um, goes from everything from email marketing to content to um, app development to social media, obviously. Um, our creative services team, we have an in-house department of graphics designers um, and copywriters. And those all report into our, our director of uh, creative. And then video production, um, which is everything you can think of from a broadcast standpoint, digital production, et cetera. I am a dog mom. This is my, um, my seven-month-old dog on the right, Walter. I use any excuse I can to bring him up and um, show pictures of him. Um, so a little bit about, we'll see if I can get the cadence of this correctly, because this sometimes gets funky on me. Um, a little bit about my background. Uh, so I graduated from UMass with a sports management degree. Um, went on from there to an internship with um, the uh, NBC GE corporate sponsorship group at the 2006 Winter Olympic Games in Torino. Um, we were there for about five weeks, did hospitality, met with a bunch of their different sponsorship guests. It was an awesome experience. It's pretty much been downhill since. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm kidding, <laughs> kind of. Um, uh, I went on to another actual internship um, once I graduated uh, in New York with the MLB Players Association. And I worked in our consumer products licensing area there, um, supported two areas that are pretty much as um, opposing as it gets, which is our video games area and our trading cards and collectibles area. Um, and that was an awesome experience. It got me really into the um, professional sports world and sort of an idea of um, consumer products and merchandising, which um, played a big part in, in what I ended up doing over the past 10 years. Um, from there, I got a full-time job with the MBA Global Headquarters in New York. Um, did a lot of different activation. I was once again in our consumer products group there, working with um, licensees all over the world. Um, I think they're up to like 300 now, companies that are producing product with MBA marks on it. Um, I was under two areas. One was apparel and accessories, supporting the larger relationship with Adidas and managing some of the smaller categories within that. And then uh, electronics, so supporting the relationships with Take-Two, with EA Sports, and then managing some of the smaller toys and games, tchotchkes, home furnishings, um, you name it, we put a mark on it, and, um, and people paid us for it, which was even better. Um, worked with a lot of different brands. Uh, Walmart, if any of you have been to Bentonville, Arkansas, I spent some time down there. Adidas, obviously, EA, Take-Two, M&Ms was one of my um, smaller but favorite accounts. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, I spent six years at the NBA Global Headquarters. I moved back to Boston, which is um, you know, near and dear to my heart, obviously, and um, spent some time doing international business development for a footwear company that's actually based out of Rockland, Michigan. Um, we worked on this very top cider brand, Keds, Saucony, um, Stridewrite, and uh, all over the world doing international business development, essentially everywhere ex-US. Um, traveled to a bunch of different unique locations and found myself in, uh, in the Midwest, in Minneapolis. So 
Um, that's me. So, <laughs> does everyone know who this is? This is David Stern. Um, David was the commissioner when I started at the MBA Global Headquarters. And David had a really interesting philosophy on marketing, specifically for the MBA. Uh, we don't need it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> when I joined the, um, the MBA, I learned very quickly that they not only didn't feel like they needed it, they didn't even really have a marketing department. Um, you know, we, we worked with, um, as I mentioned, sort of licensees in the, in the global merchandising group, and then our sponsorships team worked with a bunch of different um, global partners that worked from, from a um, partnership standpoint. And from David's seat, <laughs> those were two massive revenue opportunities and all the marketing that we could possibly need. We've got 300 companies all over the world that put our marks on everything. We've got, I think it's 150 now, don't quote me on that, but um, Global Partners, Sprite, Turner, every, you know, anything that you can think of that's been associated with the MBA that's out there sort of doing this for us. Why would we, <laughs> why would we have a marketing department? It's just a cost center, don't need it. Cut to February 1st, 2014, and David retired, and Adam took over, Commissioner Silver. Um, the first thing he did within his first 90 days was hire a CMO. Pam Eel, um, who then went down the road of building a marketing department. And Pam's background was with State Farm, who was a, a major partner of the MBA. Um, so she had a lot of different insights to bring to the table. And you know, they've they've done an awesome job sort of building a brand around the MBA. You know, they've um, they've had taglines over the years at the league level, I love this game, all these different things that any of you who are fans of the game probably saw out there. Um, but Pam did an awesome job of what you know, we really all know as, as brand identification. And she did this with this campaign, this is why we play. She um, launched it two and a half years ago. Um, is that right? Maybe it was three years ago. But um, you know, it's, it's actually sustained itself. It's got a paid advertising spend against it. It's got different activations at grassroots levels of events all around the world. Um, they've done an awesome job with it, and it's really the first time that the MBA has had something like this, and it's actually a really pivotal time for them to have a true brand identity, because the game, you know, is really coming up on the upswing. Um, for the, are there any actual, like, MBA fans, like, I've watched this game forever in the room? Okay, okay, all right. Well, yeah, forever's, you know, <laughs> it's all in perspective. Um, but some of you will probably remember the late 90s. Um, NBA was, was having a tough time. A lot of image problems. Um, a lot of the players were involved in less than palatable activities off the court. Um, and it, it made things challenging. And um, it's really been on the upswing lately. The, you know, we're in a unique situation from our competitors at the NFL, at MLB, at the NHL. Um, our players are celebrities. Um, they are personas, they're larger than life, they're on social media, they're engaging, they're um, huge personalities just out there constantly with different fashion trends and, um, and they each have their own brand. So having the league be able to sort of put a platform out there that pulls all of this together and actually starts to pull in each of those things that quite frankly just doesn't exist in the other leagues is, is huge. Um, and they've done a great job rolling this out. I'm going to show you um, a spot that they're actually doing. So this year would be, this is why we play campaign. Um, they're doing sort of a mini campaign within it, um, which is the I'm Why campaign. And they've reached out to each of the teams um, for a, a sort of localized custom version of this that they'll activate with different national broadcasts. So they are, we'll say 80% of the way there um, with our spot, and I'm gonna show that to you now. Um, ours obviously is um, pretty unique. We're honoring our former head coach, Flip Saunders, um, whose son is an assistant coach on the team. You'll see him out there uh, 
this evening and whose daughter still works in the offices here with us. Um, but it's a really cool sort of way to, to tie in the story um, from a branding standpoint, right? We've got um, a team here in Minneapolis that, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive into now, quite frankly, um, has had a really tough time with the market. You know, our, our fan base here, um, I don't know the, the sort of demographics of the room. Is anyone from the Twin Cities? Are you guys from all over the place? Okay, great. Um, so you can probably all attest to the fact that um, a lot of people have lost interest in the Timberwolves over the years. Um, and quite frankly, rightfully so. Um, we've made some terrible decisions on the basketball court <laughs> from a personnel standpoint. Um, it's, it's been sort of a mess from a branding standpoint up until the past few years. Um, we've been all over the place and we didn't really have that identifiable brand that people could really latch on to. Uh, so when the NBA came to us with the I'm Why campaign and said, you know, we've got a few ideas on what this story could be, one of the things that, of course, immediately jumped out was, was Flip. Um, that's something that people actually probably not so much for the Timberwolves, more because he was a player at the U and you know, his, his ties to Minnesota. Um, but it really helps us remind people like, hey, you know, he actually built all this. The success that the team hopefully is gonna be seeing very soon um, was under his architecture. And as part of that, you know, it, it sort of fell upon my team to, to come up with a brand identity that, that made sense. Um, and that hopefully people could relate to. I think, you know, that's sort of been the, the biggest challenge has been coming up with something that uh, is not jumping all over the place. The team was notorious for sort of changing taglines and not really identifying what we stand for. Um, so in 2014, actually the same agency that US Bank used for their Power Possible platform, um, we partnered with an agency here locally to, to sort of revamp everything and start to build consistency and hopefully, um, get the same sort of tone of voice in the way that we're talking. I love hearing um, Matt speak because I know it's exactly what the VP of marketing at US Bank would be saying and what the VP of sales at US Bank would be saying. And that's sort of what we've been trying to build here over the past few years within, um, within the team. And it's really new to sports marketing to have to do this. Um, if any of you are fans of professional teams, you probably know that marketing isn't really a huge priority, especially, you know, you think about the NFL, I, I mean, half the teams don't even have a marketing department because they don't need it. There's 70,000 people showing up eight times a year that pay the bills for the entire year. All the bills, all the player salaries, all the personnel salaries, all of it. Um, and it's, it's really the teams like ourselves that are not legacy brands in the NBA like LA or Boston or New York that need an, identifi an identifiable brand. Um, so for us, after working with Little and Company, um, you know, we, we landed on our, our purpose. We moved away from sort of the mission, vision, values thing that wasn't resonating with anyone internally, so why would it resonate with anyone externally? Um, and just made it really simple, be a pack. That's what it's about, right? Um, aside from the obvious that we're timber wolves and wolves travel in a pack, um, it, it really felt like the right rally cry for the organization to sort of have each other's backs and actually start moving collectively towards the same goal. So um, that started in 2014 and you know, we've built a bunch of different sort of brand materials off of this. Every year we do our um, brand day, brand week, where we get the entire staff engaged and re-educate them on the brand itself, the sort of pillars of the brand, our brand promise, our place in the market, everything that we represent, and then um, eventually sort of the campaign for the year. I love this line though, the last city of the East, the first city of the West, and the urban capital of the frozen North. <laughs> so cool, right? So a lot of these materials came from um, brand evolution really that we did in, in the spring. We unveiled a bunch of new brand elements. It, wasn't, um, it certainly wasn't a rebrand in the traditional sense. Uh, we didn't sort of reinvent anything that, that is, is pivotal to the brand, the, the pillars of who we are remained intact, but, um, but we got a lot of different um, legs out of here that, that sort of helped re-educate people internally on how we do talk to one another and how we do talk to our partners and to our t season ticket holders um, and how it should all be consistent. Um, and it all, it all sort of stems back to this idea of our true north. Um, this is one again that this actually did come about um, as sort of new and identifiable as part of the rebrand that was not part of our brand 
um, in the past, and it gave us an opportunity to sort of put something out there that we could keep purposefully, ambiguously, um, for people to sort of define in their own cadence, whether that's an internal sales contest or the guys, you know, after, um, after a loss or after a win, you know, where are we headed towards? What's our, what's our guiding light? It's our true north. Um, so we started to sort of integrate some of that, that language into uh, the everyday culture here and hopefully um, see it come to life. And that's, that started to happen internally. So we, of course, took it externally. Um, All Eyes North is the uh, current campaign that we have out in market. Um, again, I think I'm most excited about the fact that for the first time we have something out there that feels cohesive and organic and sort of ownable for us. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily something that's been done. You know, we talk about sort of emerging trends in MBA marketing. Um, you know, we got the guys together with a professional photographer to do essentially a fashion shoot. Now they were in their uniforms um, with our partner badges on the uniforms um, and they were with the basketballs, but um, it's a whole new look at these guys. And we really needed to do that from a brand strength standpoint. Um, there's been a little bit of an educational process internally, you know, trying to, to help the sales guys, earmuffs, um, <laughs> understand <laughs> that some of these branding plays are actually feeding the funnel. You know, if we can get people engaged from a content standpoint, they're going to come back. And it may not be the second time they come back or the third time they come back, but eventually they're probably going to come back and they're probably going to buy a ticket. And then they might buy a package. And then they might eventually become a season ticket holder. So we're trying to tie it all together in a way that, that hopefully makes sense for what, again, I think most uh, sports organizations are as a, as a sales organization to understand why strong branding um, is, is so pivotal for us. And there's, there's other MBA teams, I was talking to Leon earlier, um, you know, there's other MBA teams that are starting to do this. We'll talk through a couple of different case studies quickly later on, but um, you look at Detroit basketball, I mean, that is something um, that has been sort of pegged as a, as a case study within the league. They went into um, a pretty dire situation in downtown Detroit and just started building these pillars, community and, um, now I can't remember what the others are, but um, these sort of pivotal things that would hopefully get the entire market re-engaged with the team in a way that, again, it just feels right. Um, and that's something that sports organizations haven't been doing for a while. Um, it's not dissimilar from US Bank. It's actually, I was excited to hear the end of that. I wish I caught more of it, but um, you know, to have a financial institution saying, you know what, three months, we got you. You're all set. We'll take the hit, worry about you. Um, that's not something that, you, that financial institutions are doing. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, it's certainly not what people expect from them. Um, and in a, in a very different way, sports teams are moving in that direction with, with branding. Um, so it's a big part when we talk about sort of emerging trends, um, brand identity and you know, sort of embracing campaigns. Um, you know, we, we rolled out All Eyes North about two months ago now. Um, and we did it in sort of all the traditional sense. We've got gear on people. We've got our sort of traditional advertising out of home. Those of you that do walk around the offices today will see our street pole banners up. These are um, so simple and so silly, but they're one of my favorite elements that we do every year. It's, um, it just sort of marks our territory, not to, not to get too on brand with what wolves do, but um, you know, like this is where we are and this is, this is who we are. So it's kind of, kind of exciting. Um, yes, U.S. Bank is our presenting partner. You'll see lots of U.S. Bank in the building this evening. It's also college night, which is presented by U.S. Bank. So um, there will be a thousand screaming 19-year-olds um, all brought to you by U.S. Bank. <laughs> so you can thank Matt for that um, with their $10 tickets. Um, this is a, a little example, a little bit of a teaser of what I'm going to show next. But uh, we have, uh, this is actually our building that we're in, Mayo Clinic Square from the 7th Street side, but we've got this three billboard layout that we get to sort of play with and have some engaging opportunities. And, you know, we, we talked about, you know, sort of finding something that's ownable for people. Um, those of you that are not from Minnesota, um, a, little, a little education on the market. Pride of place is a huge thing here. And being from Boston, I can actually really well identify with that, um, which makes it really easy. But, um, you know, the market, more so than a lot of places. I think, uh, you know, it's easy to say, oh, everybody loves home, everybody loves where they come from. But Minnesota in particular um, really responds 
quite differently to people who come here and choose to stay here. And that's really important. Um, you know, they, they, <laughs> they really um, they want people to see the value in being here, that it's a beautiful place to live. It's a really easy place to live. It's a really kind, wonderful place to be. And when people actually start to see that and choose to stay here, um, it's really highly valued. So this idea of like fly over a state, like there's nothing there, it doesn't really sit well with the Minnesotans. And they may not express that in a, in a traditional sense. It's more of the passive aggressive sense. Um, there is some truth to that. I'll tell you as an outsider, and I'm allowed to say that. Um, but when we talked about sort of revamping the brand this year, this was, this was something we wanted to, to put out there and to say, you can't, you can't fly over us. Like, you got to pay attention to us right now. We talk about All Eyes North. There's, um, there's a literal sense to it. All eyes on us. You know, we go back to Jimmy Butler, massive, massive transaction on trade night for us um, to bring one of the top 15 players in the league here. Um, Timberwolves finally got it right. You know, it was like that moment. All eyes are on us. And, and there's a little bit of a swagger to that that we haven't put out there before that the people are actually kind of embracing. And they like to, to sort of tote that, that flag, which is exciting. Uh, direct mail piece, so our season ticket holders all received a booklet that, again, sort of utilized that really dynamic photography of the guys uh, for start of season um, with our, our sort of campaign mantra there. Uh, I'm going to show one more video, uh, two more videos, but one right now. North is where we're from. It's who we represent and it's where we're headed. It's midnight blue. It's frost white. It's long days and bright lights. It's the ice cold commitment that burns in our eyes, that defines and defies. It's relentless pursuit of this moment and endless preparation for the next. It's Jimmy, Wiggs, Cat, and Tibbs. It's all of us standing up, standing out, standing strong. Doing the work, pushing the weight, pulling together, ascending and attacking. Putting North on the map for all to see. Because the time is now, the world is watching, and when you fly like this, you can't fly over us. Not anymore. This place, this team, this time, never settled, never satisfied. This hustle, this style, this grind, North is on the rise. Um, so that's our that's our brand spot that we're we're tagging with different games throughout the season. But um, again, you talk about sort of emerging trends. I mean, it was it was really important for us to to educate people internally that um, that we're a brand. And I mean that I am so proud of this spot because that just feels like Nike. And you know, I we're there's a lot of different symbolism here. The league has finally moved to Nike to make the uniforms that keep ripping on the court. No further comment there, but. Um, <laughs> You know, from a brand standpoint, brand association, come on. From a, from a sports marketing standpoint, it doesn't get better than Nike. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we were delivering some of the excitement with, with everything that's happened here. There's been a lot of change for this franchise over the past six months. Um, and we, we rolled out something that is really different. It was kind of scary for people. There's no music in the background. Well, why is there no music? There's no yellow Starburst tickets on sale now. Why is there no yellow Starburst tickets on sale now? Just <laughs> let's just see what happens. Um, and it's the response to this has been awesome. We've we've seeded it on our social channels. We pushed it out via email. We've got it obviously running on TV. Um, we've got different cuts of it that we're sort of repurposing throughout the course of the season. But um, but it's a big part of the storytelling, right? And that that's been a huge thing that that NBA teams have started to do. All sports teams really have started to do. I actually think, um, excuse me, the the Twins do um, a pretty good job. Twins territory. I mean, they, they you talk about brand identity. Everybody can can sort of identify with them, um, which is huge. And again, a big change um, from probably even ten years ago. You know, the industry, sports marketing is is really interesting. I went to school and happened to study it, but um, you know, at the time, it wasn't a huge option. I mean, there were a handful of schools in the country that really specialized and offered a degree in sports marketing and in sports management. And the number of programs that have cropped up in the past 11 to 12 years that are, that are creating you know, more opportunities for people to learn about the industry are actually really starting to finally turn the corner and bolster the industry, and get people to start thinking about this in a new way. Um, it's really, it's still in its infancy stage. You know, I get asked all the time, 
why aren't there more women in the industry? <laughs> it's still all men, right? There's, there's 160 um, employees here at the Timberwolves and Lynx. I think there's 35 women. Um, and it, it, to me, it's just a product of the fact that this, this is really still young. <laughs> And as, um, as it continues to grow, you're going to start to see a more diverse, diverse um, workforce. And you know, that's really where you're going to start to see more of these trends starting emerging, too, because people are getting a lot smarter about the way that we're trying to engage with fans and, um, and deliver to them. Um, so the other piece to that is, is analytics. Um, there's a couple of case studies here from different teams around the league, but um, we'll start with my, my hometown. Um, I bleed green until we play them, um, but the, the Celtics, you know, um, it sounds so simple, but this is, this is a huge thing for NBA teams. They're starting to invest in analytics teams and business intelligence teams, groups of people internally dedicated that can start to segment markets and can start to come back to the marketing team and say, hey, you know, we've, we've got these different pools of demos and we've, we've <laughs> I think, been able to identify how we can communicate them. Um, so from a marketing standpoint, we get to then you know, go into our toolkit and figure out how we do communicate to them, what we say to them, how we say it to them. Um, it's, it's exciting, you know, and technology fortunately makes that very easy for us. But um, you know, talking about sort of allocating marketing dollars, I think everybody sees NBA teams. Um, it, it probably goes without saying that we are all global brands at this point, um, largely in part. Um, from the, the level of international players that we have in the league, and the amount of international players we have in the league, and then you know, obviously our, our parent company at the NBA being a global entity. But um, the dollars are not what you'd expect for a global brand from a marketing standpoint. Uh, so we've had to be really smart to try and keep up with some of the trends that are happening in some of our competitive brands. Um, not even necessarily the, the sports teams in town, but um, how we're actually competing against some of those discretionary dollars. Uh, with other brands in the market. Um, focusing on high priority games, this is one that we've adopted. Um, we sort of pinpoint throughout the course of our 41 home games, um, anywhere between 10 and 15 that we think have the best opportunity to potentially sell out and put our money against those. From a paid advertising standpoint, we put our resources against those from sort of a communication standpoint and try to double down. Analyze engagement metrics. Um, so this is something that we're just starting to sort of dabble into, and there, there's a couple of reasons for that, but um, uh, primarily being resources. The staff has grown significantly. You can probably attest to this better than I can, but um, has grown quite a bit over the past few years to try and accommodate this. You know, our digital staff <laughs> right now is only five people, um, which is insane when you think about it. But um, you know, we're, we're working on growing that area to make sure that when we are pushing out content, we're able to actually come back and, and not only see what those learnings are and what those findings are, but actually respond to them in a way that's beneficial uh, to the organization and, and hopefully um, well received to the fan base. And finally, A-B testing. Um, this is another one, again, with, with resources. It's been a little challenging for us to be able to truly do this, but we have gotten um, to dabble with it a little bit. A, a couple of years ago, actually, the 2015-16 season, I did a little bit of A-B testing, not dissimilar from the example you see on the bottom right here, um, to see how people were responding to ad units that we put out with players versus ad units that we put out with logos. And surprisingly, <laughs> um, it was actually the logos that, that tested better. They were actually driving more transactions, um, which is completely counterintuitive to everything that I learned at the NBA league offices, which is ride these, you know, um, personalities as, as much as you can. This is what people identify with. Um, but as we've gotten to, to diving in on some of these things, we've actually seen some, some actual findings, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about our sort of big, new, exciting things for this season, um, which all largely focus coming off of this analytics piece on content. Um, it goes, obviously, without saying, I probably could get up here again and just talk for hours about um, you know, what content means to an MBA team and how we're trying to adapt to that and keep up and still come up with sort of original and cool ideas and ways to, to bring people in because um, it's challenging. You know, that, that news cycle has gone to 24 seconds, <laughs> whatever that Twitter scroll is. Um, so we have to try and find things that, that actually engage people, um, whether it's for a long amount of time or, you know, that, not that long of a time. Um, engage them in a way that's actually compelling 
and meaningful. And um, I'm super proud of one of the ways that we've done that, uh, which is about six months ago with the unveil of our new logo. Um, we utilized a lot of different sort of local elements, again, storytelling, to try and introduce it and, and get a little bit of engagement out of that. And um, it was exceptionally successful. Um, we were able to uh, sell out our last home game of the season, which was completely meaningless <laughs> at that point. Uh, we were not in the playoff hunt um, for the 13th straight year, for those of you keeping count. Um, it really has sort of become known as as a throwaway game in the market. Um, the Twins are usually in season at that point. We lose a chunk of the fan base over to, to Target Field. Um, so we, we challenged ourselves internally to find a way to get everybody in the building and unveil our logo in the arena, control this, and then utilize that from a digital standpoint with a content push. Um, and we sold out the building. We gave out 20,000 t-shirts with the new mark on it. Um, we kept it under wraps about as long as we possibly could until our good friends down the street at Star Tribune leaked it, um, which I promised myself in 2018 I'm going to not mention anymore because I'm trying to get over it. But um, we, uh, we promised everybody that if they were there for our fan appreciation night for our last home game of the season, that they would be the first ones to get a look at, um, at our new mark, at the, the new era of Timberwolves basketball and what we were doing with that. Um, and this is, the, this is the video that we showed at halftime to, to do that. Oops, wait a minute. Oh no, I screwed this up. Um. We'll jump back to this. Check your textbooks. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five banners hanging in the Minneapolis Auditorium. But after all the parties and parades, they took the ball away. They took blood, sweat, and tears. 27 years to start our chapter. Old Shep was born, he brought his crew. Harvey Marv, Who Rich, Coach Moss, Campbell. Oh baby, what a play! Dougie West, Sam I Am. Some call me string team, a wolf with no clothes, short shorts, and a tap line wolf over legendary HHH Metrodome. Together, we showed the NBA 1,072,572 reasons why basketball belongs here. Time went by, things got more familiar. We set our sights on first half and bullseye. Take yourself at home, baby. All Star came to town, and JR took us coast to coast and brought the East Bay to the Midwest. You heard it. Don't worry, Mr. Taylor said today ain't locked down that homeless rep. With the fifth pick in the 95 draft, the team will select. Oh, yeah, they did that. Did you, Matt? We were looking at the future right in the eye. This old chef had to go. Time for the trees. Climb the mountains. Climb that chest. Mr. Nelson? Oh, great. You ready for this? Because it's strawberry time. Oogly oogly ada. We're all in the Wally's world. We've got two. Sweet for the wind. Yes! Surround with the dish. Sammy C. Free. MVP. MVP. Time for a break. Time to break it up. 
Um, that was a fun one. Uh, <laughs> that uh, that was so pivotal, and I realize I, we are running way late on time here, so I'm going to try and wrap this up quickly. But um, part of the reason that we we told the story the way that we did is because if you look really closely at our new logo, it's actually our secondary old logo just kind of reversed, um, and and that was entirely intentional. We, we strategically made the decision to go with an evolution instead of a revolution. We could have easily gone with something completely new and aggressive and um, out there, and it, it just didn't make sense for this market. It didn't make sense for the team. Um, it was the right move, and we had to make sure that, um, you know, even if people didn't necessarily get that, you know, knew that they were hoping for, that they understood the why behind it. Um, so, I, I mean, I applaud my team internally that, that produced that to, to bring it to life in a way that hopefully captured people's attention. And, um, you know, the numbers that we saw from this were, were dumbfounding um, from a content standpoint um, and fed the funnel. I mean, we had people in the building for the first time that night that have converted into season ticket holders, um, which is huge and helps sort of illustrate what we we're trying to do. Um, so very quickly, um, you know, things that we're, we're looking to do new this year. Um, all new content plan, you know, that was that video was sort of a piece of it. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to drive engagement to grow both our, our fan base. We've got approximately 4 million followers between our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. Um, we've got about 2 million on Weibo at this point. Uh, we just played in our, our preseason games over in China. So we're trying to continue to grow that base and, and help feed the funnel. Um, new paid opportunities, you know, there's, there's platform specific um, opportunities out there on Facebook, on Instagram that are that are new, whether it's their carousel ads. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of different products that those platforms are now delivering that can help drive direct sales. Um, alternative revenue streams. So we're we're working with Twitter, we're working with Facebook and YouTube and Weibo on ad um, revenue sharing, which is awesome. The league has opened that door for us. Um, Twitter Amplify has been great for us so far. We've we've got additional money coming in just from playing content and people, um, you know, working with those platforms to get different ad shares in there. Uh, our email marketing vendor, I'll jump ahead to that quickly in a minute. Um, we're working with a company called Movable Inc. to actually deliver intelligent email content. So picture this for those of you that aren't familiar with what I'm talking about. You open an email at 11.04 and when you reopen that email at 11.06, the content's actually different. It's adjusted. The weather changed, so we're going to actually recommend a different route to the game tonight. Um, we've got a new menu item <laughs> and we no longer have it available. Sorry, it sold out. So don't worry about going to the concession stand because it's not even in there when you go back to check the email. Um, it's super sort of responsive to what's happening from a real-time standpoint in the environment. And we're able to actually deliver better, more accurate information to our fans. Um, and finally, a new mobile app, um, which we're referring, of course, to our, our remote control to all things Timberwolves. It includes you know, all of your ticketing capabilities. It includes maps to target center. It includes real-time stats, um, everything that you would come to expect in a really sort of easy to navigate, beautiful interface. Um, I've got examples of some of those. We'll see if I can jump through that video again. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so this is an example of Movable Inc., as I mentioned. Um, different times from the, you know, starting from your left, um, you know, what you receive on game day prior to tip. If you check that same email again during the game, you'll get um, a, a live score update with top performers down on the bottom. 
And then post game, if you check that same email again, we'll have updated it to upcoming games for you to, to potentially purchase and join us for, um, as well as final stats. And finally, um, our mobile app. We've I sort of talked through this a little bit, but all new ways to sort of engage with the brand, um, whether you're in the building and you get sort of this custom experience to, to browse concession stands and merchandise stands, um, entry options, um, or it, you know if you're, you're outside of the market in some capacity and any other place all over the world and just able to, to sort of get your, your team stats. Um, that's all I got. I am really running over here. I am so sorry for that. Um, I realize you guys got a schedule to keep to, but um, thank you for having me and I hope everyone enjoys the game tonight. Of course, if you have any feedback, don't hesitate to send it our way. We love to hear from the fans. Um, and, and hopefully deliver an awesome entertainment experience for you. So thank you. <laughs>